Hello everyone and welcome back to my Interstellar Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 and in this live stream I decided to start out by trying to make an ITS cargo ship that we could use to land cargo on the surface of Mars and offload it but a normal ITS ship configurations wouldn't allow for that we needed something that opened up and so I tried to use this pedal adapter from the Space Y pack and added tweak scale to it to size it up to a good ITS size and you can see I've put girders there to make the floating nose cone issue go away. And here I am building the rest of the ITS ship. ITS, of course, SpaceX's idea. And so we have the Raptor vacuum engines and then three Raptor sea level engines. But after building all of this, I decided that I would need some sort of cargo to go in it. But you can see how it's forming up there. I'm using some of the KK launchers. But, well, that's actually from Thrym Aerospace, those um, those landing leg holders, if you will, the fins. But this uh, first stage is from Kiki Launcher, so it's sort of an amalgam of different ITS mods here, in addition to my own little hold there. It would be great if those pedals actually fold down lower than that, and then a ramp came down off of one of those pedals, so that the stuff could just be rolled out to the ground on the surface of Mars. That would be really convenient. Right now we st still need some sort of crane or something to hoist it out. But we'll work on that later. So I needed some sort of cargo. I decided that the first logical thing would be some sort of ISRU unit. Oh, I'm by the way, sorry for the little ticker at the bottom. That's, of course, all relevant for during the stream date. That was February 5th, February 5th. But uh, here, I've got this huge ISRU unit and a drill there and ore containers. This is based on ore, but it's got converted to methane. I, I re sort of redid how the ISRU units, stock ISRU units work. And... The thing is, how much electricity is it going to draw? How much power does it need? And so I've decided to attach a reactor because it's a really big ISRU unit. And it worked. It produced methane. So the next step was to test out our life support stuff. And you can see I've got a greenhouse on this ship. And I wanted to see how the greenhouse worked or didn't work. It was from Lackluster Labs. And we also have Lackluster Labs water purifiers. And, of course, that's a Lackluster Labs tank. That I've got in the back and Lackluster Labs is not officially our, our realism overhaul compatible. I'm the one who's trying to make it realism overhaul compatible because I want sci-fi ships. I initially thought about putting Super Dracos on it and using those and having less fuel of course but then I uh, went with what's rapidly becoming my favorite part in uh, KSP Interstellar this uh, closed cycle gas core engine and with that kind of power, we get a lot of thrust to weight ratio, so we need a lot more fuel. And so you can see me extending the tanks out to accommodate all the methane that we need. And I'm still using methane because, because of the fact that we can drill it on Mars and replenish it, um, which we can't do with ammonium. We could do with water. I can drill for water, but I can't do for anything else, I think. I think just methane, oxygen, that sort of thing. And... Uh, and water. So yeah, that's why I'm using methane so much. But anyway, we put the little radiators there to uh, make sure everything stays cool and also they look cool too. And uh, solar panels just in case. And then get it ready for launch in the VAB. Now it's got enough delta V to go straight to orbit. It's not showing it in the VAB though. It showed it in the SPH. So that caused me some consternation when it came time to launch. Okay, well now it's reading a different Delta V again. So, which one is right? Let's find out. Throttle up, SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. It is going up. And it sort of tilted the wrong way. And we have no way of rotating because it's only one engine. Right. That's fine. That's fine. I feel like a smart ASS might be doing a better job here than I am. Oh, or not. Wait, that's a bad thing. We may need some way of um, of saving the Kerbal, should that exact thing happen. 
And yes, I already had a, a board system in mind when I said that, so I put a little decoupler there. There happened to be good Lackluster Labs decouplers and of course Separatrons and that served as the abort system. I also thought that fins could be useful in this case, at least to control the roll. I will now roll it. Doesn't look so good on launch, I have to say. It looks pretty good in the SPH. The fins sort of detract from it, I feel. Actually, we could use some more altitude. I don't think the RCS is working. Yep, pretty sure it's not working. Oh, no, it's it's because they're disabled. I hate the whole RCS is disabled on start thing. Confuses the heck out of me. Oh, it's not that big a model list. I've, I've made bigger. Okay, well, it's official. The toggle radiators action group doesn't actually toggle the radiators. Hold on. This is actually a pretty good... With the music, it seems sort of good. We've generated some carbon dioxide, which is weird because the greenhouse should be consuming the carbon dioxide, but we're generating it. Why? But um, we need to figure out a way to get him some more oxygen then. Doesn't have a CO2 scrubber. Well, this is pretty much a CO2 scrubber. Is it really only gonna be 12 hours worth? Wow, it's, it's really gotta be 12 hours worth. I don't think this is good for him. Hmm. So, we should have put some other CO2 scrubber on here for him. Okay. In an effort to save Jeb from oxygen deprivation, I decided to take up a suggestion from one of the viewers and create a mini ITS ship. One that won't have the same capacity as the full ITS, which is 100 passengers. We only need a small one. But I don't have a pod that looks like that. So, I decided to sort of sneak in those little uh, crew modules inside a structural tank and then put windows on the outside of the structural tank. Those are Lackluster Labs windows. So another case where Lackluster Labs helps. I also add the life support stuff inside there, which is, I think, fair enough. I also decided to craft a unique heat shielding system. Now the ITS is supposed to go in sort of like a shuttle, sort of like a lifting body. I've never had much success with that. I wanted to go in tail first, but that required some heat shielding on the bottom. I was initially going to put actual heat shields, but then somebody convinced me to use the radiators instead because radiators actually have pretty good heat dissipation and they also have huge heat tolerance. So I decided to go with that because they sort of had the right shape to them, these in particular from the, uh, from the KSP Interstellar pack. So there you have it, that's the look of it. And I'm arranging the RCS thrusters right now. We've got solar panels, we've got landing legs, the works. And then I put it on top of the dual Raptor launcher that you've seen so much of, the, just the first stage, because we're using the closed cycle gas core engine again on the second stage instead of the Raptors. So here's how that went. Well, this is an unwieldy sort of thing. Why not four Raptors? Well, we didn't need it for the nuclear engine before. And this is a nominal burn time for the Raptors. If you had four Raptors, you need a bigger tank. They'd run out of fuel in a minute and a half only. Let's see what Mech Jeb says is the thrust-to-weight ratio of this. 
So for whoever asked about, uh, I don't know if whoever asked about KOS is still here, but this is what it does. I'm not controlling the rocket. Well, see, now it has a thrust weight ratio of 1.38 there, which is why I expected. So, yeah, MechJab likes to lie to me about things randomly, especially when it comes to that closed cycle gas core engine. Oh, nuclear engine. What's it doing? Uh-oh. I think we have substantially less thrust weight ratio than we were promised. Why? Well, KOS is trying again. But it's not igniting. That's methane. It's connected directly to a methane tank. It's config configured for methane. Oh, well. Yeah, I know, it says throttle zero, but why? I mean, but the fuel was... The propellant was fine for a bit there. When it initially tried to ignite, the propellant was fine, right? Yeah, I guess it doesn't like KOS. Well, that's annoying. Why doesn't it like KOS? Well, anyway, I can deal with this. Um, hmm. No, not you. Stop. I don't know if the RCS is working. Um, it doesn't appear to be firing any locks for the RCS. Hmm, that's a good point. Yes, I don't have locks for the RCS. But anyway, that engine should have ignited properly anyway. Let's see what's going on. Yes, I need locks for the RCS. I can put it in the tail tank. Did you ever do an engine test on the pad? Well, I guess we need to do an engine test on the pad. Okay, that works. RCS on firing yes they seem to be working let me see if the radiators blow up or something they're really close actually you know what let, let, let's intentionally do that I think they're alright right now but what happens if we do this Interesting. They don't appear to have a problem with that. They're somewhat magical, aren't they? Yeah. Not too sure I approve of that, but interesting to know. Alright. Uh oh. Um, that's weird. Uh, that's not how that's supposed to go. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work out for us. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Aww. 
Wait, Valentina was not in one of those bits? Why was Valentina not in one of those bits? That's not fair. Clearly Valentina should have been in one of those bits. Shame. Okay, what went wrong there? I guess, yeah, boosters. Oh, stage recovery loves those. 2.6 meters per second? They're fueled already. Really? Okay, uh, those are pretty powerful parachutes. Looking at the stats though, and after a recommendation, I decided we only really needed one booster, one extra Raptor engine. And so that's why I put there, uh, with floats at the bottom, because I like floats on my boosters when I'm trying to recover them. So that's what I launched. I mean, considering this sort of flew off to the side last time... This doesn't seem, on the face of it, the best strategy. You can already tell that KOS is having all sorts of fun. I could help it out a bit. I didn't even bother to tilt the engine on the booster a little bit to help it out. Working is an interesting term for it. It's not really holding the pitch that it's supposed to. But it hasn't flipped out yet. This is one heck of a rocket. That's uh, that's an interesting look for a rocket right there. Off it goes. Yeah, aerodynamic forces would probably rip that to pieces, huh? Yeah, no thrust trail off, no thrust curve. Well, we're on our way. Oh, okay, I'll take it. Please, light, please. Guys, it's not lighting. Hold on. I'm gonna cancel that program. Yeah, confirmed. Confirmed. Um, this engine doesn't obey KOS. That engine doesn't obey KOS. So, that sucks. But, I guess it allows me to make certain corrections now. And so we made orbit, and then we made a series of rendezvous burns in order to get Jeb's ship to rescue him from oxygen deprivation. Of course, we're carrying quite a lot of life support on this particular ship, much more than he would need. But here we are, nearing his vessel. And I decided not to dock with it. I forget, I think maybe uh, the docking port on Jeb's vessel was actually different than the one that we have on the mini ITS ship. So I had Jeb EVA to get to the ITS ship. And of course, we built it with that lander can on the side as a hatch. That was the best way I could figure out how to do that. And then he was in. So uh, this is basically how the episode ended with phenomenal Delta V in this. Though I don't think it's reading the correct Delta V in the readout in Mech Jeb. I don't think it's going to be, uh, well, I don't know, maybe it's uh, more than 10,000 meters per second. It'd be interesting to find out. But of course we have to also take into consideration exactly how much life support Jeb has at his disposal. We can't send him off to another planet without adequate sustenance. But anyway, Jeb is safe and we have tested uh, two new vessels, some interesting ideas, and also the ISRU system for future use at Mars. And actually the most logical thing would be ju to just send this to Mars, but I do want to check out if the life support actually holds up first. 
So on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.